you can do it okay. om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om gyanati mirandasya gyananjala shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Taisma Shri Guravena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swam Rupahagadama Him Tatati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Ragunantam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijanam Sahitum Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Ladita Shibusha Kambitam Shah E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namustute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vindavanishwari Vishabano Sute Devi Pranamami Ari Priya Vancha Kalpataru Bisha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patita nam pavane bio, Vaishnava bio namonama, Namam Vishnu padaye, Krishna prishtaya butale, Shimati bhakti vedanta somiti namine, Namaste sarasvati deve, Gauravani pracharine, Nirvishe shashunyavadi, Paschachadi shatarine, Jai shi Krishna chaitanya, Prabhunityananda, Shi adoita gadadhar, Shiva sari Gaura bhaktavrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So thank you very much once again for that inviting me and please uh, accept my uh, excuses for not having uh, checked, double, double checked what the time was actually. Thank you Prabhu. Shyam Swarupa Prabhu. <laughs> so we can proceed of course i am aware of um uh that i'm i'm just filling in for his grace in the prabhu um due to his situation now so surely um i'm in nowhere qualified to uh, speak instead of him but uh, we shall, with his mercy, uh, with his guidance, whatever he has taught us, with all his years of uh, being very much merciful upon us and uh, very much uh, tolerant of all our offenses, uh, with his mercy and the mercy of Shaprabhupada and all the Vaishnavas, we will try to um, present uh, the knowledge that is found in Shaprabhupada books. So um, please uh, bear my inebrieties. So Prabhu, is there any question? The, yeah, one of the questions from the team is like, uh, in the family life, if the other person is not coordinating for Krishna conscious activities, uh, is it uh, like, you know, how does the person manage? Um... Yes. Yes, this is um, it's an important topic because unfortunately, um, it is widespread. I can tell you that here in China, especially, we see this very, very often. Um, in China, 80% of devotees all over the country are Matajis. Um, somehow or other, and there are much more uh, female devotees here in China than uh, other than male devotees. And they often are caught into that situation where their husband do not want to cooperate. So, um, of course, be, if that one first thing before uh, discussing this, maybe we can talk a little bit about the importance of uh, marrying a devotee. Um, because now I, I'm, I have seen some, some trend that um, some young Matajis, maybe they are having some attraction for a man that is not a devotee. And that started from before themselves becoming devotees. So in other words, they had some attraction for, for a young man and then they became devotee, but then that attraction did not leave them. 
So uh, I won't spend too much time on this topic, but we should be very much careful as to whom we choose to marry. Uh, especially, I mean, to say when we, when we are devotees, we have got this knowledge that Shepard Prabhupada is giving us and these instructions. So to marry a, a devotee is essential. Otherwise, there's no meaning to, to marriage. Hmm. Um, so before jumping into the topic of how to deal, let us first of all uh, brush a little bit the topic of uh, why we should be marrying a devotee. And that applies both, uh, I mean to say, a female marrying a, a man devotee and vice versa. So I, I will be the one sharing the screen, right? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay, I will be sharing now. Let me try. Screen sharing desktop. Okay, are you seeing my desktop now? Yes, bro. Okay. So um, we shall go to Shimad Bhagavatam. This. This is Shimad Bhagavatam three fourteen nineteen. Okay, so anyone would like to read this? Dimitri Prabhu, you want to read? Rajesh Prabhu. Okay, so Maybe I shall, I shall read. No, we can read. I can. Oh, respect Prabhu. Oh, respect Prabhu. Okay, go ahead, Prabhu. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Sorry, I need to mute. Yam ahur atmano hrityam shreyas kamasya lalili yasyam shra duram adhyasya pumamscha pumam charati vijvaraha Oh, respectful one, a wife is so helpful that she is called the better half of a man's body because of her sharing in all auspicious activities. A man can move without anxiety, entrusting all responsibilities to his wife. Mm. So, this is uh, in many places in the Shastra, the wife has been described as being the better half of a man's body. Mm. So in human society, men need women and women need men. It is very rarely found that a man will remain Naishtika Brahmachari throughout his whole life, especially in the way that the movement has spread in the, in the recent uh, decades, that um, men, young men are joining Krishna consciousness in their maybe early 20s and so on. So they have not undergone the Brahmacharya training, which is um, normally found in Vedic culture. In other words, they have not learned to control their senses and become humble from the age of five. And therefore, um, given that situation, it is very hard that when we take to Krishna consciousness later on um, to not want to get married because the senses have not been trained to be restrained. And therefore, there is a feeling of agitation due to lust. And therefore, there has to be regulated um, uh, I mean to say, uh, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. And the wife is very much helpful because she will help in all these uh, different uh, advancements of human life. So this chapter actually is a very important chapter. This is when um, Kardama Muni was uh, feeling, actually, he wanted to get married. Okay, now this is a pregnancy of hey, the evening. Krishna, yes. I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. hey, just, just put it on the chat uh, for a minute because he's answering another question. Once it oh, is okay. done, you can ask. Yeah, thank right. you. Mm. 
So here, okay, I've put the translation only. Okay. Who wants to read this one? Rajesh Prabhu, you can continue. Okay. As a fort commander very easily conquers invading plunderers by taking shelter of a wife, one can conquer the senses which are unconquerable in the other social orders. So that appears to be a bit contradictory because how can by taking shelter of the opposite sex, okay, for, for women now to understand this verse, you can think of men, see, it's a, you can flip the words over, around. So how can, um, by taking shelter of the opposite sex, can one conquer um, the senses? So the, the answer actually in, in the, in the purport, Shah Prabhupada explains that the Grihasta Ashram is the safest Ashram. Why? Because if there is a fall down um, when it comes to uh, sexual indulgence, it is not considered a great offense uh, because after all it is done within the, the limits of sacred. Whereas, um, if one is a brahmachari and he falls down, that is seen as a great uh, fall down or even more sannyas. So for example, of course, we have uh, the movement is gone and we have seen so many fall downs from sannyasis. So if such sannyasis would have been honest with themselves and then would have entered Grihastha Ashram um, and understood because Shaprabha mentions in one purport in the third canto that unless one is completely freed from sex life, sex desires, he should not accept sannyas. So if one takes sannyas and then falls down, he's called a vantasi, someone who eats his own vomit. So this is a much more grievous offense than simply falling down in one's own married life. Um, and this is the purport here. So um, okay, let me just uh, see if I can share. Uh, okay. So now you're okay. You're still seeing uh, these verses from Prabhupada books, no? Yes, Prabhu. Okay, that means I can I can sort of split screen. Okay. <clears throat> Give us uh, one moment. Okay. Um, now we shall go to this verse. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Let me just put in the synonyms and purpose also. Are you seeing this? Yes, Prabhu. Okay, who would like to read? Can continue, Rajesh Prabhu. Okay. Between the husband and wife, one person is sufficient to execute his devotional service. Because of their good relationship, both of them will enjoy the result. Therefore, if the wife is unable to execute this process, the husband should carefully do so, and the faithful wife will share the result. Okay, so here is an important point, and it kind of touches a bit the question that was asked. So here, between the husband and the wife, one person is sufficient. So it doesn't say that the husband must do and the wife will get the, the result. It says one person is sufficient to execute this devotional service because of their good relationship. Now, it, it's based on good relationship. Uh, that means everything in Vedic culture, all the uh, relationships, from higher authorities to lower are all based on good relationships. This uh, priti lakshana, uh, these uh, symptoms of love, of affection. Because unless one has got attachment for someone, he will not be able to um, take advantage of that, that uh, relationship. When we have affection for someone, whatever that person says has got a strong influence on ourselves. And this is the whole purpose of Tadvidi Pranipate, uh, to, to surrender to a spiritual master and to serve him. This is all to develop our strong affection for the spiritual master so that when he speaks, it has a very strong impact on ourselves. Just like my son, uh, well, any, any son or any, any daughter, but you know, uh, this is my personal experience. So my son, when I speak to him, uh, he takes everything 100% without any argument. He, he accepts it as truth. So due to his attachment to me, if I can instruct him the proper way, he will make very fast progress because he does not doubt me. So good relationship between husband and wife is essential. It must be there. If there is um, misunderstanding in the couple, 
mm, that will hamper our spiritual advancement. Um, and, and here it says, because of their good relationship, both of them will enjoy the result. Mm. And this we have seen many times in the Vedic uh, stories, I mean to say, in the um, history of a uh, great uh, married couple, that one of them was performing uh, devotional service or any kind of yoga, and the other achieved the result. For example, if we speak of yoga siddhi um, uh, or attaining liberation through yoga, we know that Dhritarashtra left uh, in his old age due to the mercy of Vidura and his wife Gandhari followed him. So because Dhritarashtra attained perfection in uh, distinguishing the soul from the body and he burned his body, right? Uh, uh, so Gandhari, she entered the fire that her husband produced out of you know, igniting the agni within the body and she went to the same destination. So this is described in many places in the Manu Samhita also, it is said, uh, a chaste wife who follows her husband after death uh, will go uh, to him also. Of course, there's the whole, um, you know, to burn, uh, that the wife will enter the fire, uh, the funeral pyre of her husband. So that was done in former ages when the, uh, the capacity of human beings was much higher. But still in this age, if the wife remains faithful to a husband after his death, she will also uh, reach the same destination as him. So both of them will enjoy the result. Therefore, if the wife is unable to execute this process, the husband should carefully do so. And the faithful wife will share the result. So here we get a clue to the question that was asked. Is that, first of all, the good relationship should still be there. Even though the husband is more advanced spiritually than the wife and the wife doesn't want to cooperate. Or vice versa, the wife is advanced spiritually and the husband should not cooperate. Still, there should be a good relationship that is kept. And um, the person who's a devotee, husband and wife, should proceed. And if the husband or wife is attached to him, he will also or she will also benefit. So the faithful wife will share the result. Uh, or the faithful, I mean, the, the, the caring husband will share the result. So uh, who would like to read yeah you can continue report rajesh prabhu yes between the husband and wife one person is sufficient right. to next, execute next paragraph sorry uh, but, but the relationship between husband and wife is firmly established when the wife is faithful and husband sincere then even if the wife being weaker is unable to execute devotional service with her husband. If she is chaste, chaste, chaste and sincere, she shares half of her husband's activities. Mm, right. So <clears throat> we see here that the process of advancing spiritually is not always direct. It is sometimes indirect through the mercy of um, a devotee who is more advanced than us. And in this case, it, it is within the realm of Grihastha Ashram. So the wife being attached to the husband or husband being attached to the wife. So Shah Prabhupada also speaks of this here. This is in... Um, okay, this is in a lecture, marriage ceremony. Let me see. Okay. Can read uh, can read this portion here. Manu Prabhu, do you want to read? Manu Prabhu, are you there? Tejas, you want to read? Yeah, sure, Mahaprabhu. So this marriage ceremony is not for sense gratification. We should always remember it is helping one another. The husband will help the wife, the wife will help the husband, so that both of them become advanced in Krishna consciousness and make their human life perfect. So there is no question of divorce. There is no question of separation because divorce, separation, these are meant for sense gratification. As soon as there is some lack of sense gratification, 
there is immediately divorce or separation? No. Here, there is no such question. So are this new bride and bridegroom should always remember that in any condition of, of life, they should remain together. And that will be possible if they consider, concentrate their ideas to Krishna consciousness. Then it will be possible. Otherwise, Maya will attack in, our, in so many ways and cause destruction in so many ways. So our, uh, we are taking part in this marriage ceremony, not like ordinary marriage. It is, it is for making progress in Krishna consciousness. You should always remember that this marriage has no separation, no divorce, a lifetime. The husband will help the, the wife. The wife will help. There are so many duties of the, the wife. There are so many duty of the husband. And if they properly execute their respectful respective duties and engage themselves simply in Krishna consciousness, their life will be very happy. And not only this life, in the next life also. So take this opportunity to be happy. I want to see Sarve Sukhena Bhavatu. That is the Vedic mission. Let everyone become happy. Sarva Sukhena Bhavantu. Let everyone be happy. And without being happy, nobody can execute uh, Krishna consciousness. Hmm. So we can see here that the whole purpose of... Um... This marriage is to help one another. So that should be at the very center of family life. Now, unfortunately, uh, it is not everyone that has got this opportunity. So one thing I can mention first is that Shaprabhat's youngest sister, uh, when she was married, she must, uh, Prabhupada mentioned she was somewhere around 12 years old, so still a child, you know? Uh, this is very common, especially before uh, in uh, you know, Hindu society, they used to marry girls very young. Actually, this is not wrong. This is correct. It should, girls should get married very, very young, but there was no question of, of sexual intercourse until uh, the girl's body became ready to beget children. So generally, although she was married very young, sometimes even nine years old, she would remain with the parents. But at least she knew that my husband is there. Uh, so, therefore, the mind of a woman was already trained to be thinking of one man only. This is very, it's a great science. And, uh, and because people's mind is not polluted, in the Shemad Bhagavatam, it is said that now the, the sticking glue of marriage is sex life in the Kali Yoga. And that's a fact. So, because people's mind always thinks of sex in marriage, when we speak of marrying a nine-year-old, 12-year-old girl, immediately their mind becomes polluted with, with very vicious thoughts. And therefore, they become offended and think how you can uh, do so, say such thing. They do not understand that the science behind this is that a girl becomes lustful much more earlier than a boy. Um, of course, now, because there's intermingling, Shri Prabhupada said, uh, in, in schools, the boys also developed <clears throat> much uh, earlier than usual. But Prabhupada gives the example that you see a 16-year-old girl she will always be very careful as to what she wears, if she's beautifully decorated and so on, uh, as to um, attract uh, uh, men. Whereas a 16-year-old boy, he dresses very um, negligently, not going to think twice about what he wears, and he doesn't care. So that is manifestation of, of lust. So the lust is stronger in, in, in girls. So the, this lust comes very early, and even more now, because these, these girls are being exposed to so much um, you know, sexual uh, propaganda in movies, advertisements, and all. So by the age of 12 already, a girl is starting to feel lost. And I have many examples of this. I have taught in many uh, schools here in China where the, the, the students were around that age, and I could clearly see that the girls. But if she's married already, then the mind will not be switching between this boy and that boy and this boy, which is basically the, the mindset of a prostitute to think which, which uh, where is the client next, you know, to, so because she's already married, her mind will be fixed and that will make her very, very strong uh, because she will become chaste to only one man. Mm. And through chastity, um, women get great ascetic power. There's actually this man, Prabhupada mentioned this uh, uh, when he spoke about Gandhari, uh, who uh, blindfolded herself when she married Dhritarashtra. She did not want to be in any way 
um, superior to her husband. So just imagine such chastity. So uh, that is a great science. Uh, and um, unfortunately, it is, it is being lost. So when Prabhupada's uh, youngest sister got married, she was around 12 years old. She got married to actually a meat-eating family. And um, the first day that she went there and they were having their meals, she saw the meat in her plate and she started to cry. And uh, then later on, the, the new mother-in-law, she asked her what is going on. And she said, no, we don't, we don't need these things. You know? So then she, the mother-in-law, she started to cook vegetarian separately every day for her, you see. So why Prabhupada mentioned these examples? It's a very important instruction. The meaning is that spiritual life or, or these regulative principles, it's all individual. It rests on our own determination, which means we can follow them no matter where. But it requires uh, strength. You know, if one is not strong enough, yes, you will you will break the principles. But if one is strong enough, because sometimes we are put in situations due to adversity and due to our karma that we are put into wrong association. But that does not mean that we have to sacrifice our principle. Unfortunately, there's one Mataji here in China in the north. She was she took Ritvik initiation. Um, so she's a uh, you know senior, 60 plus. And um, she has started to eat meat again recently. Why? Because she is in her family um, environment and her son eat meat and her grandchildren eat meat and so on. So she could not protect herself. Now, uh, we have two different opposites here. We have Shaprabhat's sister that could do it, and we have this Mataji that could not. So the, the key factor is that to, still they should be um, keeping associating with devotees. Hmm. So let's say I have a wife who's not willing, or I have a husband who's not willing. That does not mean that I should give up the association of devotees. Everyone has got their trouble in spiritual advancement. This is a material world. There's nowhere that um, we will find it easy to advance spiritually. It's not possible. Prabhupada actually states that the neophyte devotee thinks that his situation has got to do with his spiritual advancement. In other words, he would think that if, if I could be there or if I could be this place, then I would be advancing spiritually. An advanced devotee is capable of keeping uh, his standard no matter which condition. So of course, that is you know, an advanced platform. So for us neophytes, it's definitely congenial to have, uh, I mean, to say a peaceful environment to cultivate Krishna consciousness. And that's why marriage is there, you know, because uh, a man might feel agitated or a young girl, she might want protection and she might want security. So therefore marriage is there and marriage, Griasta Hashem is meant for that, you know, to, to provide security, a peaceful uh, environment so that we can progress step by step. <clears throat> now there's a, there's a place because it happens many, as I said, here in China, 80% of devotees are women. So definitely uh, these, these Matajis are more advanced spiritually than their husband. Um, but still, even though a woman is more advanced spiritually than her husband, uh, she should not display that. So I will be trying to find this, um, this quote of Prabhupada. Okay, first... Um, Maybe I can share this, you can read this meanwhile. Let me share my screen. Can you see this? Text 55. Uh, no problem, we're only seeing the header. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you're seeing, but you're seeing that verse, right? Text 55, I mean... No, only the header of the window, the three dots, right? The red, green, and the white dot. Oh, okay. Why, why is this? Let me try again. Google Chrome. 
Okay, yeah, right. Is this okay yes. now? Yes, bro. Would like to read? Swadhyavali Masaji, you want to read? Hare Krishna. Text 55. Taha Swapatyur Maharaja Nirakshaya Adhyatmikam Gatim Anvi Yustat Parbhavena Agnim Shantam Ivarichishaha Snonims Taha All the wives of Sobhari, Swapatya, with their own husbands, you can Maharaj. Go to synonyms, Mataji. You can go to translation and purport. Okay. Translation, O Maharaja Prikshit, by observing their husband, progressing in spiritual existence, Sobhari Muni wives were also able to enter the spiritual world by his spiritual power, just as the flames of a fire cease when the fire is extinguished. Purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 9.32, Striyo Vishwas Tatha Shudrash Tepi Yanti Param Gatim. Women are not considered very powerful in following spiritual principle, but if a woman is fortunate enough to get a suitable husband who is spiritually advanced and if she always engages in his service, she also gets the same benefit as her husband. Here it is clearly said that the wives of Sobari Muni also entered the spiritual world by the influence of their husband. They were unfit but because they were faithful followers of their husband, they also entered the spiritual world with him. Thus, a woman should be a faithful servant of her husband. And if the husband is spiritually advanced, the woman will automatically get the opportunity to enter the spiritual world. Hmm. So again, this goes in line with uh, the other verses that we have seen. Um, that uh, if the wife is very chaste to the husband and the husband makes it back home, back to God, that she will also go. So therefore, spiritual advancement is not al always stereotyped. It is, uh, there's different manner, especially when it comes to husband and wife. So I had tried to find um, that purport where Prabhupada was mentioning uh, that if the wife is more advanced, she should not display. Um, so... I have not found this, but the the point is that the the wife should still remain um, performing her material meaning uh, her material activities, her material duties. So that is to serve nicely the husband, to be very you know dear, and and in this way she will uh, not irritate the husband because if there is um, disagreement in the family then it will be even more harder for the wife to advance spiritually because the husband will be completely against her. Hmm. There is one, um, this is a bit similar to the, the situation that some of our young bhaktas have, right? Because our, some of our young bhaktas and bhaktins, they're also in their family and they're trying to advance spiritually, but somehow or other they're having difficulties because their parents don't allow them. So it's a bit similar. So there's, um, there's a quote here that I'd like to share concerning this. It's a letter that Shri Prabhupada wrote to Gargamuni. I don't, I don't think that this, uh, this chat here can take so much, right? Let me, let me try. Okay, it's not pasting. Hmm. Let me see how I can find this. Okay. I've got to share. Okay, can you, we'll try to make this bigger.
This is not very convenient. Okay. Can you see this? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Hare Krishna. As PL to Garg Muni, 22nd November 1968. Srila Prabhupada, right? Uh, I beg to uh, acknowledge receipt of your letter dated November 20th, 1968. And previous to this letter, I received another letter from you dated November 7th. And instead of replying you directly, I have said that following words in a letter addressed to Brahmananda dated on November 12th and November 16th, that if he feels too much inconvenience at the care of his father, he may come back to you and help you in New York. I was very much perturbed when I received your letter of November 7th, 1968, and I prayed to Krishna that he may put his merciful glance upon you. So by Krishna's grace, I learned from Tamla Krishna that your father has already given you a nice apartment. So it is a sort of tug of war between your material father and spiritual father. And you are the rope in between. So in the first test, I think I have come out successfully. Successful. But this is a sporty. I have already told you that your father and mother are very good souls. They might be under the illusion of Maya. But still I must say that they are good souls. Otherwise they could not have produced such a nice children like Brahmananda and Garmuni. We are trying to educate our disciple to produce Krishna conscious children. But your father and mother without being Krishna conscious have produced such a nice Krishna conscious boys. So I am very much obliged to them. The facilities which your father is giving you is going to his credit in Krishna consciousness. The more he gives you facility, the more his balance in Krishna consciousness increases. He does not know his Krishna consciousness balance is increasing. But one day will come when you will see that actually your father is a good soul. So try to win the love and affection of your father in some way or other. You are a very intelligent boy and Krishna will also give you extra intelligence. How to deal with your father. But you must treat your father as respectful as myself. Even if you are sometimes ill-treated. You should tolerate. You should follow the example of Parlad Maharaj. His father continually tortured him in so many ways, but he never protested against his father, but he never agreed with the opinion of his father. That should be your policy also, that you will never agree to your father's demonic principles, but still you will try to serve him as faithfully as nice obedient son. I am sure your father will be responsive and gradually our mission may be successful. So you see, there's so many good instructions from Shri Prabhupada in this letter. So um, the son here was feeling disturbed because his father was against his Krishna consciousness. However, Prabhupada did not instruct him that, yes, you, you leave, you leave your father, you do this. No, he said you continue serving him very nicely. You'd be a very good, obedient son, right? Um, and then, so Prabhupada mentions a nice, nice example here. It is like a tug of war between your material father and spiritual father. So similarly, if a woman is in Grihastha Ashram and her husband is not so much inclined, it is a sort of tug of war between her spiritual husband and her material husband. Because Krishna is actually the spiritual husband. So Krishna is trying to pull you. And uh, the, the material husband is trying to pull you back. So we should not be uh, too much agitated by this. We should continue praying to Krishna. And we should continue doing our material duty also. Uh, you see, because here yeah, 
I have already told you that your father and mother are very good souls. No. They might be under the illusion of Maya, but still, I must say that they are good souls. Okay. Otherwise, how could they have produced such a nice children like Brahmananda and Gagamun? So similarly, a husband or a, a wife who gets a devotee, wife or husband, he must also have done something good. Otherwise, how is it that he's attached to a devotee, right? The whole point is to be attached to devotees and that person having gotten uh, a partner who is a devotee, I mean to say uh, a wife or husband who is a devotee, automatically gets the result, right? He's eating, he or she is eating prasadam, she's hearing Hare Krishna always. So do not think that all of this goes to waste. It is accumulating. Mm. Here, Prabhupada says, mm, the facilities which your father is giving you is going to his credit in Krishna consciousness. So, Prabhupada is speaking about the father giving some uh, apartment to his son. So, similarly, if the husband pleases the wife who is a devotee, that goes to his credit, or vice versa, again. If the wife pleases the husband who is a devotee, that goes to her credit. So, this credit is called Agyata Sukriti. The person does not understand how he's making spiritual advancement, but he's making. Why? Because he's pleasing a devotee. The more he gives you facility, the more his balance in Krishna consciousness increases. He does not know his Krishna consciousness balance is increasing, but one day will come when you will see that actually your father is a good soul. So, the, the, the son at the time uh, that Gargamuni. Thus, was thinking, my father is a demon, and this and that. So Prabhupada is saying, no, no, it's not possible. Uh, so similarly, if some of our Matajis uh, have got husbands that are not so much favorable, it is simply a question of time. They will become devotees. Uh, so we have to be enduring, because we have a stronger weapon than they, right? We have got prashadam. We have got the, you know, the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we've got the devotees, we've got the holy name. We are backed up with spiritual um, assets. So they cannot win, actually. We will win over them. But we must be patient. Uh, so this patience is one of the aspects to be successful in devotional service, right? And like to have instruction, I believe the third mantra, right? So patience, tolerance, because the Lord's arrangements will take place, but in due course of time. So try to win the love and affection of your father in some way or other. So similarly, the wife who has got a husband who is not so much inclined to become a devotee or vice versa, should not try to confront always, uh, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? By, by pushing the husband or wife to become a devotee, that will not work. Hmm? And Prabhupada said, at past 15 years old, you cannot you know, push anyone, they will break. So it's not by pushing, it's by um, increasing their affection for us. So here, we should try to win their love, somehow or other. Okay, I'll give you, um, yeah, I'll finish this and then I'll give you an example. So you are a very intelligent boy and girl, Krishna will give you extra intelligence. And this is the key here, Krishna will give you extra intelligence, because we might ask questions in classes you know sometimes we ask questions just like this question how to do how to but everyone's life is different we're all put in different circumstances um you just like you're asking a question here to me but i do not know all the intricacies of your relationship i do not know what is your context i do not know the age the you know the community the family so many things like that who knows krishna knows so this praying attitude uh, to ask the Lord, always, please, my Lord, help me. I'm, I'm stuck here. I don't know what to do. Please, my Lord. And that is the key to spiritual advancement. Because the devotee will give guidance. But it's not the devotee who are going to help you. Actually, at the end of the life, of course, don't take my, my words uh, word for word. The devotee are going to help you. But my meaning is this, is that at the end of our lives, it's Krishna who is there. I heard a class recently, I was shocked hearing this, Prabhupada said, even the devotees at the end of their life, they're not there for you. It's Krishna who's going to be there, you know. So, of course, this should not be a misunderstanding that the devotees are not helping. Devotees are the saving grace, there's no doubt. But ultimately, Krishna is in the heart. Krishna is with us. And we have to pray to him to help us. Hmm. Of course, Krishna will never be pleased with us if we are not pleasing the devotee. That is, uh, that we all know very well. But 
praying to the Lord to make arrangement according to our specific position, that is uh, really the key to success. And then, but you must treat your father as respectful as myself. So similarly, a wife must treat the husband as respectful as she would treat a spiritual master. Because according to Vedic culture, the husband is supposed to be the spiritual master of the wife. Of course, in modern day, uh, everything is topsy-turvy. So many times it happens that the wife is more spiritually advanced. But still, she should run on two tracks. She should have her spiritual life and her material life going side by side. So spiritually speaking, she's more advanced than the husband. She's superior. That's a fact. Um, because this is on the platform of the soul. So she's more advanced spiritually. What to speak of her husband? Uh, our women in Krishna consciousness would be, would be uh, uh, qualified to instruct you know, presidents of countries. So what to speak of a mere husband? But materially speaking, the, the body of the wife is inferior to the body of the husband, and therefore she, act, she has to act according to that conditioning. So this, is, this has been displayed by so many uh, great devotees. Uh, now, even if you are sometimes ill-treated, you should tolerate. Okay? So um, the greatest example in, in recently, Sri Mahaprabhu has empowered uh, Haridas Thakur to be the Namasharya. But Haridas Thakur, although he was the most elevated personality when it came to chanting the Holy Name, he always acted as a, an outcast. He never wanted to go into the Jagannath Temple, no. He said, I, I won't even pass near the gate of Jagannath Temple because the, the servant of Lord Jagannath, when they come out, they might touch me and become defiled. So he always acted as if he was an outcast. So similarly, our women in Krishna consciousness, even though they are very much spiritually advanced, they should still act as if they are normal women. Hmm. So, and by doing so, the husband will naturally be pleased. That is, that is uh, the psychology of the man. The man doesn't mind supporting the, the, the wife and children and <clears throat> working hard. He doesn't mind if the wife is very nice and, and uh, pleases him. He will be able to endure all the pain, no problem. But if the wife is always on his case, then he'll become disturbed. You know? And she's always telling me to chant Hare Krishna, I don't feel like chanting. She's always telling me I should not do this, I should not do that. It's not like this. We cannot tell anybody uh, that is superior to us to do something. It will never work. How we can win them? Through love. Uh, by trying somehow or other to make them attached to us. Mm. So another very, uh, okay, I will, I will um, stop sharing the screen. I will, I will say something first, and then I will uh, go to another verse. So um, is there, sorry. okay, there's no way to, to make my camera bigger. Am I, are you seeing me big now or? Or I'm, I'm just, in, okay. Yeah, I did a spotlight. Okay, okay. So, uh, my personal experience when it comes to this, um, how to try to change someone to become more spiritually advanced. So, I can tell you, now I have been taking up the, the full-time life of a preacher again for one year. Uh, I was full-time before preaching in central China, and then I started to work for two years. And again, I gave up my job, and I started again a year ago. So my situation here is that I'm trying to encourage three uh, senior Mataji. So the Bhagavan Mataji, the temple president, she's 60 plus years old. Uh, and uh, the two other Matajis are 50 plus years old. So they are senior. when one reaches a certain age, there's no question of instruction, receiving instruction. Anymore. They won't ply. It's like bamboo. Bamboo can be folded when it's young. But when, when they grow, older they become hard and you can just not instruct you cannot teach a, an old dog to do new tricks they say right so how to help how can we help such people now i was trying you know and it's only recently by by the the mercy of his grace and the Prabhu, that he helped me understand this, this this fact is that we you cannot make someone become krishna conscious you cannot control someone you know but if that person somehow or other develops affection for us, naturally they will start to want to please us. And if us, we are strong spiritually, 
then that person will understand by Krishna's mercy that if I become more serious spiritually, that, that person will be pleased with me. And that's how we can help others change. Not by instructing them, you must do this, you must, and pointing out their faults, you know. I'll give you a very uh, um, pinpointing example. So Labanga Mataji, she has got this habit that when she does arti, she offers all the items and then there are some frames, you know, on the cupboard next to the altar. So she always offered to all the pictures there. Okay. So that's not, uh, I mean, to say what Prabhupada instructed us, you know, we offer to the pictures on the altar, the deities and so on, and then to the Maharani, the, the Prabhupada, and then the, the devotees. So she has got that thing going on and she's been doing it for a long time. So I never said anything. Um, I did not want to. But then uh, there was the other day, or like, uh, more than a month ago, um, she decided to put, you know, Goranitai's skirt under the, um, the kurta. So the skirt could not open nicely. You know, Shra Prabhupada did mention that uh, Diti's skirt should be very wide, openly, uh, very open, very beautiful. So I just went to her and I said, you know, Mataji, um, you should not put the skirt under the kurta, otherwise they won't be able to open nicely. You should tie it above the kurta so that it can. So it's a simple thing. It's not a big thing, but that that kind of, uh, you know, she did not like. She said, well, I, I like it like this. She said like that, right? So then I got in a sort of argument with her and I said, look, Mataji, you're, you're concocting very often. Just like, then I mentioned, just like when you offer to all the pictures, uh, this is concoction, you know, you should not do something like this. And she could not take it. She could, it, it was just too much. And I did not say much, right? It was not such a big uh, offense. But when uh, people grow older and older, they just want some space. They don't want to be told anymore. They have been, you know, she's 60 something years old. She's seen a lot. She's been through a lot. Uh, she's twice my age. Her, her life you know, she was a karmi, she had a big business, she had a daughter, now she's got grandchildren. I mean, at one point, someone is just going to break when you try to instruct them. It doesn't work. And what to speak if that person is superior than you. In my case, she's a Mataji, I should treat her as my mother, right? But if one has got a husband that is not willing to change, and as a wife, I'm trying to instruct the husband, that is never going to work. Because the husband is superior when it comes to material understanding uh, so i got into that that uh, argument with her and then i was thinking how am i gonna you know be able to to move things here because they're all like this i say a small thing and they just you know so what can i do so i called sunagopa prabhu and i lamented it ah prabhu you know they cannot change you know i i, I cannot do anything so prabhu told me these these are small things he said you know let her offer if she wants to offer and I was so touched to see Prabhu, wow, he's seeing this as small things. You know, these are our regulative principles, right? And Prabhupada is saying the skirt should be on top. This, that. So Prabhupada said, uh, Prabhu said, you know, leave this aside. That's not important. You know, we've got more important things to do. You know, you should focus on preaching. And he said, you win their heart. He said, you just, you know, buy them some gifts, uh, you know, make them laugh, compliment them. You know, women generally, they can get their heart softened very fast or become as sharp as a razor very fast. Uh, they, will, they will feel offenses very sharply. So that's why we have to be very smooth and soft with them. Uh, it's not the same thing as dealing with a 16-year-old brahmachari. 16-year-old brahmachari, I could have yelled at him. You know, I went, okay, okay, I'll, I'll fix this. No problem. You, he can take it. Um, of course, Prabhupada said past 15, actually, we should not, you know, but let's say like a 13-year-old or so. But actually, it's not Prabhupada. Prabhupada is quoting from Chanya Kapandit. So, so then, after I had this conversation with Sunagopa Prabhupada, I understood that this is the key. You know, I cannot change them. They will change because they become more affectionate to me. So I'm trying to be as, as nice as I can. You know, the, then later on came something that Labanga's old mother, she's 90 plus years old, she became sick. You know, I had to bring her to the hospital. Of course, I do this uh, very happily to help the devotees' parents, you know. So I carried her, you know, old body, right? She cannot even walk. So I carried her uh, in the car, out of the car. And this. so Labanga, she generally, uh, Labanga Mataji, she became, of course, very much uh, happy 
with what I had done, you know, for her mother. My wife and son just arrived. I'll close the door. So, so seeing that she became more affectionate, and she understood. And later on, after that, I could see she's trying to please me by becoming more serious. So the skirt came back on top, <laughs> on top of the kurta, and. Um, I could see, you know, she's trying to follow more regulative principles. So this is the key that someone. Okay, I I cannot control old women. I cannot control young young boys also. Okay, you say Hare Krishna and then you go out. Okay, say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna, Krishna Sudam. Ah. Hare Krishna, Krishna Sudam. Hare Krishna. Can you be a good boy and go see? <laughs> yes, so that's the key. So if you are in a Grihasta Ashram where the other is not cooperating, he doesn't want, the key is not to challenge, it's not to face. That will never work. The key is to become an even better wife or an even better husband. You know, what the husband wants, okay, you give. You know, he wants this, okay. Even if it's, uh, let's say, some material activities that seemingly go against Shep Prabhupada's instruction. Uh, Prabhupada said, no sense gratification, always, 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 you know, advance, uh, you know, in service and this. Yes, that's a fact. But let's say that if my husband or wife wants to do some uh, material activity, Okay, let, let me go, let's say, you know, travel or go around, go to the park or the zoo or whatever. And let's do it. Right? And later on, that will prop and sell it. Somehow or other, try to gain the love of your father. So somehow or other, you try to get their love. And with time, it will come. It's a fact. It must act. It's not possible that our family member are eating prashadam so often. Uh, they are... Um, they are uh, hearing Hare Krishna so often, so what? All of this will have no effect? No, it's not possible. There is an effect, but we just cannot see it now, that's all. So therefore, we must tolerate. Um, so now, okay, so that was concerning, you know, what His Grace Srinath Gopal Prabhu had instructing. And I can, I can understand now that, yes, this is really the key, and especially with older devotees, uh, people who are more senior than us or, you know, uh, with young brahmacharis, children, it's different. Then chastisement has to be there. We need to confront them and correct them. And this and that. Now there's a nice verse concerning uh, tolerance. Prabhupada spoke of tolerance, right? He said, whatever your, your nonsense father speaks or do, you tolerate. And then he quoted uh, Prahlad Maharaj. <clears throat> so, of course, Prahlad Maharaj... Uh, Example is so high, right? That uh, father tried to kill even, and still he was was uh, tolerating. But still, um, okay. So this is Bhagavatam, the ninth canto. Which, uh, mean? Yeah, who wants to read this? Chavana Muni was very irritable, but since Sukanya had gotten him as her husband, she dealt with him carefully according to his mood. Knowing his mind, she performed service to him without being bewildered. Purport. So Chavana Muni was actually almost 90-year-old body, you know, and he was very irritable. Normally, old people are irritable, especially old men, you know. They're feeling so much pain mentally and physically that naturally they won't, want to, they won't be happy. Okay, report. This is an indication of the relationship between husband and wife. A person, a great personality like Chavana Muni has the temperament of always wanting to be in a superior position. Such a person cannot submit to anyone. Therefore, Chavana Muni had an irritable temperament. His wife yes. Sukanya. Sorry, Mataji. Yeah, so yes. this is, um, this is important. Uh, wanting to be in a superior position so as you know men especially when 
the relationship is with the wife, they will always want to be superior. And that is natural because of the physiognomy. Physically speaking, a man is stronger than a woman. So psychologically, it will be the same. They will want to be superior because, you know, the body is, is built stronger. So this um, superiority complex should be accepted on both parties. That means that the wife should also accept that, yes, the husband is superior. But this is, you see, of course, in, in modern days times, this is a very touchy topic, you know. Uh, modern Western girls will never accept this. But actually, Prabhupada will explain very nicely that this is not uh, inferiority. It's a mean to conquer the husband by the wife. Okay. You can continue. With it. His wife, Sukanya, could be happy with her husband. Sorry, could his wife, Sukanya, her. could understand his attitude. And under the circumstances, she treated him accordingly. If any wife wants to be happy with her husband, she must try to understand her husband's temperament and please him. This is victory for a woman. Even in the dealings of Lord Krishna with his different queens, it has been seen that although the queens were the daughters of great kings, they placed themselves before Lord Krishna as his maid servants. However great a woman may be, she must place herself before her husband in this way. That is to say, she must be ready to carry out her husband's orders and please him in all circumstances. Then okay. her life will be successful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this um, is a very important instruction by Shri Prabhupada and not just the wives of Lord Krishna, but of course, uh, the wives of Lord Krishna all came from very exalted uh, royal families. But yet we learn from their prayers uh, or when, when they spoke to a Shimati Draupadi in the 10th canto, how they are saying that they're they are serving Krishna as menial uh, servant, you know. So, uh, Prabhupada said, however great a woman may be, but now in this Western culture, women also, you know, they, they achieve great things, you know, they open companies and this and that, and that will be a cause definitely for the ego to be puffed up. But however great a woman should be, she should not present herself like this in front of her husband. She should be very humble. And not only this, Frank, I will give you an example of, um, okay, we will, we will come back here. I just want to be uh, speaking a bit. So maybe you can highlight. We'll come back to that report. <clears throat> um, Shtimati Draupadi, you know, um, I'm actually putting together a video concerning um, women guru in ISKCON. So I'm done, a, you know, I'm doing a lot of research. So in the Mahabharata, there's a section where Shtimati Draupadi speaks, you know, and how qualified this lady was is unimaginable. She was managing the entire wealth of the Pandavas. She said that Yudhishthira Maharaj does not know, Bhima does not know, Arjuna does not, none of them knew how much they had because, you know, they're conquering this wealth that's pouring from everywhere. They control the whole world. So gold must have been stocked in mountains. You know, Shimati Draupadi, she knew exactly how much wealth is, is entering, how much wealth is exiting, she knew the, the name of every single servant that they had. She, <clears throat> she knew all, yeah, the name of every single servant. She knew which servant was doing what. In other words, she was managing the entire affair, the, the whole uh, you know, palace and so on. So how, how, how much qualified she must have been? She was not just some, some you know, uh, normal lady staying at home and uh, no, she had so much responsibility that she was taking care of. But even though she was so, such a capable woman, when she was serving her husband, <clears throat> she said, uh, that is her words, actually, maybe it would be good that we go see this and we will come back again to finish that purport. Um, let me open this in a different window. Then we keep this. And I will go search this here. <clears throat> but she said that how she was dealing with her husband. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, here it is. Um, okay, let me share the screen. 
Okay, it's a little bit uh, messy. Can you see this? Yes, from. Okay, so this is from, uh, these are verses, okay, from the Mahabharata. Okay, maybe you can, you can start reading from here, the verse yeah. 19. Yeah, sure. Abandoning vanity and subduing desire and wrath, I always serve the devotion, the Pandavas with all their wives. Okay, so, okay, in former days, of course, you know, men were allowed to have many wives. This is not allowed. So, of course, we, we are not expecting our women in our Krishna consciousness movement to be under standard of Draupadi. Okay, so keep that in mind. She is, an, she is basically an incarnation of the goddess of fortune as, as a Shakti. She's not her directly, but she's been compared to her, you know. So there's no way that our present women will be able to achieve that standard, but that should be the, the aim that we, you know, that should be the standard that we try to follow. Okay. Continue. Restraining jealousy with devotion of heart and without any feeling of degradation at the service I perform, I always serve my husbands. This is such nicely put by her. She doesn't feel degraded by serving now this western uh, civilization women if they're uh, you know you say could you serve your husband immediately they will feel degraded how dare you you know i'm equally earning i'm also bringing bread on the table how could you say that but shimati dopradi she's saying no i do not feel any degradation in this uh, okay ever fearing of if ever fearing to utter what is evil and false or to look or sit or walk with impropriety or to cast glances indicative of the feelings of the heart. I serve the sons of Prita, those mighty warriors as blazing as the sun or fire and as handsome as the moon. Those heroes who are endued with fearful energy and prowess and who are capable of killing their enemies by a glance of their eyes. Hmm. Let's continue on. Celestials or men or Gandharva, young or handsome, wealthy and adorned with ornaments, my heart is never attracted to any other. I never bathe to eat or sleep till he that is my husband has bathed or eaten or slept till all of our servants and followers have bathed, eaten and slept. Just, just see the exalted position of Srimati Prabhupada. She was capable of not eating. Okay, of course, this is even in Hindu families. This is a standard that normally the, the wife will serve the husband first. Uh, so we can see the Vedic culture is still, you know, somewhat present in India. Bathed. She will not bathe until her husband has bathed and slept. She was the first one to rise in the morning. And she was the last one to go to bed. And so much engagement throughout the whole day. Till all our servants and followers have bathed, eaten, and slept. In other words, she was doing more than any other servants. How much tolerance and determination this woman had. Whether returning from the field, the forest or the town, or hastily rising up, I always salute my husband with water and seat. I always keep the house and all the household articles and the food that is to be broken taken well ordered and clean i carefully keep the rice and serve them the food at the proper time this is a very important instruction that the house should be very nicely ordered and clean and you know uh, nice incense and bhajan especially for us now Prabhupada bhajan i can tell you personally that sometimes you know uh, due to the engagement i have Maybe I feel a little bit of anxiety. You know, sometimes we have to deal, we have to preach to people who are not so much favorable or try, uh, you know, preaching task is a thankless task, right? So when this does happen and I come back home, if I can smell incense and hear Prabhupada Bhajan and, I, and the, house, the house is peaceful, immediately I feel relief, immediately. Therefore, I always tell my wife, yes, always have some incense burning and Prabhupada Bhajan on. It has some tremendous effect. So that also can be done. You know, even if our husband or wife is not devotee, uh, if we keep some incense and some nice soft bhajan of Prabhupada in the house, they will appreciate uh, because it is, it is spiritual. It's so nice. You offer the incense, you let it burn, and Prabhupada bhajan in the background full day, you know, very softly. Uh, so that will relieve the, the pain of, of the husband when he comes back home. I'm never angry, I never speak harsh words, I never imitate women that are wicked. Avoiding idleness, I always do what is agreeable. 
I never laugh except at a jest. I never stay for a long time at the gate of the house. I never stay long in place, places of nature's call or in pleasure gardens of the house. I always refrain from la laughing loudly or indulging in high passion and from everything that may give offense. Oh, Satya Bama, I am always engaged in serving my husbands. So this actually took place uh, when they met after um, at Kurukshetra, you know, during the eclipse. So the wives of Lord Krishna met with Srimati Dopadi and all the wives of Lord Krishna inquired from Srimati Dopadi, how can you serve five husbands, you know? And, and Srimati Dopadi is explaining here. So, um, of course, now we have devotees who are joining from every part of the world. Uh, and we have Matajis that are joining from lower cultures, you know. So all these things will be very, very hard. It's already hard to, to follow for Indian Matajis. So what to speak of Matajis from other, of other nations. But still, we should get some inspiration from this. Just like husbands will try to get inspirations from the uh, how the Pandavas protected their wives or and so on, so on, you know, the perfect husbands like Prithu Maharaj and so on. We will never be able to equate them, but inspiration is taken and guidance is there. Similarly, Matajis ought to follow great women as Shimati Draupadi. A separation from my husband is never agreeable to me. When my husbands leave home to go to my relatives, I give up flowers and fragrant paste of every kind and I undergo penances. Whatever my husband does not drink, whatever he does not eat, whatever my husband does not enjoy, I always renounce. O oh, beautiful lady, adorned with ornaments and ever self-controlled by the instructions received by me, I always devotedly seek the welfare of my husbands. I always perform those duties that my mother-in-law formerly told me in respect of relatives, as also in respect of alms-giving or offering worship to the celestials, of offering oblations to the pitris, of boiling food on auspicious days in order to offer it to the prit, prit, uh, pitrus and the guests of reverence and of service to those that deserve our respect and of all else that are known to me. I always perform my duty night and day without the least idleness, having my heart firmly fixed in humility and fixed in approved rules. I serve my gentle, truthful and virtuous husbands, considering them always as so many by poisonous snakes capable of being enraged at trifle. Okay, so you see, so there are many important aspects here, is that you see all these pitris, you know, offering food to the pitris, to the guests, all these are part of Varnashram system. Actually, Hinduism, this word you all know, it's, it's a foreign word, but the actual word should be Varnashram Dharma, because it's a society that is arranged according to four Varnas and four Ashrams. So, Stri Dharma, uh, the religious principles for women are enunciated here. So it's not because we become devotees that we should kick out Varnasham Dharma. Actually, Prabhupada's mission was running on two tracks. One, to establish uh, pure devotional service, and two, to establish Varnasham Dharma. So this Varnasham Dharma can be established if us devotees act accordingly. And these principles here enunciated by Srimati Draupadi are part of this Tridharma. So it's not that my husband is not a devotee, therefore I should, you know, uh, not perform these things. No, even though the husband is not a devotee, one should try to follow in the footstep of Shimatri Dopadi, because that is part of Varnasham system. Uh, side by side, of course, the Mataji should continue her spiritual engagements of, you know, Shavanam, Kirtam, chanting her rounds and all. But at the same time, she should serve her husband very nicely. And that will definitely go a long way, because first of all, um, performing our duty with detachment, with the desire to please Vishnu. That is also devotional service. Now, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Ramananda Rai in the beginning how to please the law, yeah, he said Vanashram system. Of course, then he came to you know much, much higher level, but it's still there. That's the beginning. So if there's no other way, if one is stuck uh, in Grihastha Ashram with a husband that is not a devotee, well, isn't that an arrangement of the Lord. Nothing is done without his arrangement. So there should be uh, some opportunity there. We have to understand that. So if the wife can nicely advance spiritually and at the same time perform these duties according to her husband, she will feel spiritual advancement because she will perform those duties 
with the aim of pleasing Shri Prabhupada and Krishna. Prabhupada was very clear, you know, just like that letter that we saw. He instructed them, be a good, faithful son, right? And here, another point is that so many, um, considering them to be always as so many poisonous snakes capable. Of, now, that's a very strong uh, uh, example, but the, the, the point is this, is that sometimes uh, women might feel fear uh, in the presence of their husband, uh, meaning maybe I, I, I should not speak something uh, uh, bad or I should not, why am I feeling fearful in the presence of my husband? Is it wrong? And the, the, the fact is that it's not wrong. Of course, the husband should not be a, you know, a completely a degraded uh, low-class man that he's, you know, uh, I mean to say, raising him and his wife and so on. But if the husband is, is a good man, you know, maybe not a devotee, but he's a good man, and the wife still feels some fear to, to agitate his mind, that is not uh, wrong in itself. Even Shrimati Draupadi is, is speaking like this, you know. Okay, 37. My opinion is that to depend on one's husband is the eternal virtue of women. The husband is wife's God. He is her sole refuge. There is no other refuge for her. How can when a wife act what is disagreeable to her husband? Okay. So here, here this, is, uh, this is purely on the uh, Varnasham system path. There's actually a verse I left in the Shemad Bhagavatam also that says that the wife should accept her husband as her worshipable Lord. However, Prabhupada in the purport clearly states that if uh, a woman cannot surrender to Krishna, then she should accept her husband. So this, <clears throat> because you see, uh, the husband is the wife's God. But if the husband is telling the wife, you know, let's do this or that, and he's not a devotee, then how can he be the God? You know, so Krishna is actually the, the wife's God, but still she should uh, perform her womanly duty with all um, attention and here it says her sole refuge so that is also not correct because you know uh, that's why we have to analyze these things from both angles spiritual angle and material angle so spiritually speaking even all these rules can be broken at one point if there's really no other choice just like we learned from the, the wives of the uh, yagnik brahmana right they simply left their house and they went to krishna or the gopis but, you know, this is a very, very exalted position. So there's no other refuge for her. So actually, uh, women devotees, they have got the refuge, they have got Shri Prabhupada, they have got the devotee, they have got Krishna, you know. But still, that does not mean that she should not uh, honor the uh, endeavors that her husband is doing. Because after all, he's doing his best, right? He's simply trying to give what, is, what he thinks is best to his wife. And materially speaking, also, he uh, he's trying his best to uh, provide for the family, is it not? So even in the Krishna book, um, in the episode of uh, when Shrimati Rukmini Devi, she uh, saw the pitiful condition of her brother Rukmi, who was chastised by Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna kidnapped her, and then Rukmi chased, and then Krishna chastised Rukmi. You know, he he shaved some part of his head and and this and that. So Rukmini Devi, she became soft-hearted, you know. And Prabhupada said, after all, Rukmi was just trying to, to do the best for his sister, according to his understanding. So that should be the vision of a devotee. That a devotee should see karmis or family members that after all, they're just trying their best, you know, they're trying to help them. But of course, they are an illusion. Okay, Mataji, thank you. Uh, 38, right? I never either in sleeping or in eating or in adorning my person act against the wishes of my husbands. I am always guided by my husbands. I never speak ill of my mother-in-law. Oh, blessed lady, my husband has become obedient to me for my diligence, my alacrity and for the humility with, with which I serve my gurus. Yes. So here, that is, you know, we will go back to that purport that we left. That is exactly what Prabhupada is going to mention. My husband has become obedient to me. So this is the way that the wife can conquer her husband. It's through her chastity and service. At one point, the husband will become so much soft-hearted because men are generally more hard-hearted. You know, they, um, 
they don't become shaken by emotion so easily as women. But if the wife served the husband so nicely, at one point the husband would become conquered. You will see that this woman is so such a good wife. She's always thinking about my welfare. She's always serving me so nicely. What can I do for her? What can I do for her? You know, then you will start to think, you know, I want to please her. And if the wife is a devotee, you will realize, yes, she wants me to chant Hare Krishna. All right, you know, after all, she's serving me so nicely. Let me pick up the beads. I'll start chanting every day in this way. Okay. Yes, Every day I personally wait with food and drink and clothes upon the revered and truthful Kunti, the mother of those heroes. I never show any preference for myself over her in matters of food and attire and ornaments. I never reprove in words Preeta Kunti, who is equal to the earth's, her, earth herself in forgiveness. This is a good instruction for women about their mother-in-law, right? And here also, she said, I never speak ill of my mother-in-law. So even though there's some disagreement with the mother-in-law sometimes, uh, you, know, you should be tolerant. Okay. 8,000 Ramanas were formerly fed every day in the palace of Yudhishthira from plates of gold. 80,000 Snatak Ramanas. All leading domestic lives were entertained by Yudhishthira with 30 maid servants assigned to each. Besides these, 10,000 Yotis with their desire under complete control had their pure and well-cooked food carried to them in golden plates. All those Brahmanas that were the utterers of the Vedas are used always to worship duly with food, drink and clothes taken from stores when a portion of them had been dedicated to Vishwadeva. The illustrious son of Kunti bade 100,000 well-dressed maid servants with bracelets on their arms and golden ornaments on their necks. They were... Should be had. Sorry. Had. Had. Yeah. Had. Yeah, I, I corrected. Okay. Were adorned with costly garlands. Yes, but with garlands. costly garlands and gold in profusion, and they were sprinkled with sandal paste, adorned with gems and gold. They were all well skilled in dancing and singing. I knew the <laughs> names. <laughs> Guru Prabhu, can you read? Uh, uh, who, who wants to read? Guru Prabhu, can you read? Uh, Kirti Da Mataji. Guru Prabhu is reading. Yeah, go ahead, Prabhu. Okay, Guru Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So it's uh, from 48. Yes, Prabhu. I, I knew the names and features of every one of those girls and also what they use it to eat and what they use it to wear and what they use not to do. The greatly intelligent son of Kunti had also 100,000 maid servants who duly used to feed the guests with plates of gold in their hands. When Yudhishthira lived in Indraprastha, 100,000 elephants used it to follow him. Such was the procession of Yudhishthira when he ruled over earth. It was I who regulated their number and formed the rules to be observed in respect to them. It was I who had to listen to all their complaints. I knew everything about the maid servants of the palace and other servants, nay, even of the cowherds and shepherds of the royal household. Yeah. So you see, this is what I was mentioning earlier. She knew every single of their names. She knew uh, all of their complaints. Now, how many she, she's mentioned, you know, hundreds of servants, 10,000, you know, hundreds of thousands. She knew all of them, how much qualified she was in organization, you know, such a uh, expert lady. And she knew even the cowherds, the shepherds. Uh, so she was not ordinary woman. Okay. Hare Krishna, I would like to continue on his behalf. O blessed, okay. and o blessed and illustrious lady, it was I alone amongst the Pandavas who knew the real income and expenditure of the king and what really their Pandavas whose whole income was. Okay, here, um, sorry, Mataji. So here, this is an important thing that... Um, 
for us husbands that we should not control the money in the in the house in other words what, what i mean by this is that we should allow our wives to uh, uh partake of the i mean to say even though the wife might not be working she should be allowed to manage the money mm. and, that is in, and that is actually stated in the manu samhita uh, and that is good for women because in this way they get the engagement mm. when they get engagement they feel satisfied so uh here you can see that her alone knew the real income and expenditure of the king and what really their panda, uh, their whole income was. So she knew uh, how much money they had, not any, any one of them. Mm. So uh, why I mentioned this is because, okay, now we're speaking of the example that uh, we have a devotee, uh, Mataji, who has a husband who's not so favorable. So we're speaking of pleasing, right? We're speaking of how she has to be very faithful and so on, so on. But now what if it's the husband who is a devotee and the wife is not? Then he has also to find ways to please the wife. And that is one of the ways, is that not to always restrain her that don't spend this money, don't do that, don't do that, don't touch my money. You know, you should not be like this. You should engage her in managing his own income. You know, that will please the, the wife. Okay, can continue. Oh, beautiful lady, those foremost of Bharatas throwing up me throwing upon me the whole burden of looking after all those that were to be fed by them would always pay their court to me. This load, so heavy and incapable of being borne by persons of evil heart, I, sacrificing my ease, used to bear day and night, all the while being affectionately devoted to them. While my husbands were engaged in virtuous pursuits, I supervise their treasury as inexhaustible as the ever full abode of Varuna, ocean. Day and night, bearing hunger and thirst, I used to wait upon the Kuru princess so that my nights and days were equal to me. I used to rise up from the bed first and to go to my bed last. O Satyabhama, this has ever been my custom. This is the great charm ever known to me for making my husbands obedient to me. I have never used any charms of wicked women and I never wish to use them. Yes, because this conversation actually started, I did not put these verses there, but Satyabhama asked Shimati Draupadi, what are the charms that you're using that your husband are like hand-picked husband? You know, they're always ready to carry out your, your, your wish. Just like, you know, we, we all know this, this very famous story of, um, okay, maybe you can highlight it. So we all know this very famous story of uh, the golden lotus, right? There was a 1,000 petal golden lotus when the Pandavas were in exile that fell from the sky and Shimati Draupadi found it. And, you know, can you imagine 1,000 petal of beautiful shining golden lotus? So Shimati Draupadi, she said, I would like to offer this to Yudhishthir Maharaj. Let's see how she's again thinking about the pleasure of her husband. So what did she say? She immediately asked Bhima Singh, uh, my dear Bhima, I want more of those lotuses. So immediately Bhima, yes, he rushed, he took his mace and he, you know, and then the whole, uh, um, I don't know how much you know of Mahabharata, but then he found, you know, the, the abode of Kuvera and he got into a fight with uh, uh, monkeys there. Uh, not monkeys, sorry, I was thinking. <laughs> with um, <clears throat> Rakshashas there, Yakshas and Rakshashas, you know. And I believe even this is the time when uh, he met Hanuman. That's why I said the word monkey. He met Hanuman on the way. And you know, the tail. Um, so anyway, so you can see that Bhima Singh, such a mighty warrior, 10,000 on the strength of 10,000 10, elephants, he's being controlled by Shimatri Dopadi like this. Her desire is his holder. But how did she gain that? How did she manage to control such a hero? It's through her devotion to her Lord. So if we are in unfavorable situation, we should still try to win the heart of our family members or you know, husband and wife that are not favorable. Somehow that we have to win them. So Shimati Dropedi's example is the, the pinnacle, you know? uh, but still we should try to follow in her footsteps. So now coming back to the purport of Shri Prabhupada, um, now we will have an even better understanding Okay, so I think uh, we read this already or we were here? Yes, we read this, right? Can you see? So when yes. the wife... Hmm. When, 
when the wife becomes as irritable as the husband their li- life at home is sure to be disturbed or ultimately completely broken in the modern day the wife is never submissive and therefore home life is broken and even by slight incidents either the wife or the husband may take advantage of the divorce laws according to the vedic law however there is no such thing as divorce laws and women must be trained to be submissive to the will of her husband westerners contend that this is a slave mentality for the wife but factually it is not it is the tactic by which a woman can conquer the heart of her husband however irritable or cruel he may be in this case we clearly see that although kyavana chavana chavana muni was not young but indeed old enough to be sukanya's grand grandfather and was also very irritable sukanya the beautiful young daughter of a king submitted herself to her old husband and tried to please him in all respects thus she was a faithful and chaste wife mm, yes so and later on because he was a very strong muni so it turned out that he changed his body into a very young and handsome form you know so she got all, all her desires uh, fulfilled so this is the key um that a woman can conquer the heart of her husband and thus change him so as i was saying we cannot change someone by direct instruction especially superiors so therefore if a, a wife wants to change her husband into a devotee she should adopt those means of serving him nicely and continuing at the same time her own spiritual life side by side and in order to not lose this tolerance and enthusiasm she should keep the association of devotees you know? and just just remember the the tolerance of shrimati dropadi as she said i used to bear that burden on my head what is that burden managing you know hundreds of thousands of servants and knowing all their problems can you imagine we just try to manage one person with one or two problem and we become already uh, you know i don't want to do this you know i don't let them take care of themselves shrimati dropadi no she was taking care you know so you can follow in the footsteps of shrimati dopadi concerning this tolerance and don't worry everything will come in due course of time krishna's arrangement after all have to take place through time now we live in the material world in this world things manifest by time so keep praying to lord krishna to to help you and keep associating with devotees and keep uh, trying to somehow or other please the heart of your beloved one and uh, it is for certain that in due course of time uh, the result will be shown so maybe we can pass to a next question yeah thank you so much prabhu so the next question in the chat is uh, what is how uh, brahmachari training how do we undergo brahmachari training um how to okay how to undergo brahmachari training uh, let me see where the question okay how do we undergo brahmachari training yeah so um for brahmacharya as we spoke very briefly in the beginning actually according to vedic culture brahmacharya starts from the age of 5 you know and this is when the brahmachari is sent to the the gurukula and there he is trained up to uh, very submissively serve the guru you know the main idea is to develop humility and to control the senses so these two things are very much important so this humility the whole vedic culture all indian culture uh, the the very prominent aspect was that humility not to try to lord it over other to exploit other but to become very humble and servant just like this morning i was listening to a class and prabhupada was speaking of how magnanimous indian culture was that even enemies comes to your home and you have to uh, you know treat him so nicely that he will forget that he's your enemy and prabhupada gives the the example of the the battle of kurukshetra where at night time you know they would go to one camp to another uh, just like when arjuna went to the camp Uh, to beg for the five arrows that uh, Bishmadev had prepared to kill the five Pandava brothers. 
So Duryodhan received him. Although Duryodhana is a demon, the effect of Vedic culture, uh, of this uh, training, Brahmacharya training, they all went through Brahmacharya training, even Duryodhan, right? And the Ashrama Dronacharya. So it's so strong, the effect that even though he's a demon and his eternal enemy is there in front of him, he's coming. And yes, you know, what do you want? I want the five arrows. Yes, take them immediately. So magnanimity, uh, not enviousness, you know. This Western culture has brought so much envy in, in India. No, uh, the poison, Prabhupada said, the, you have brought the poison with you. That means the Westerners have brought all this, you know, of exploiting other. So this Brahmacharya training is very much uh, important so that we learn that to be menial servant of the Guru. So the standard is that from five years old, that's, that's where uh, we should start, you know. Uh, unfortunately, in, in current age, there's no Vanashan Dharma going on. So therefore, best use of a bad bargain, it doesn't matter, as soon as possible. As soon as we can, we should go and live in the temple. And there we should live uh, under the ruling of the authority there. Hmm. We have to learn to be ruled over. Our Vedic culture, this Krishna consciousness is diamet diametrically opposite to the modern civilization that everybody has to be proud, has to be, you know, uh, the best, right? Um, just do it, you know, all these uh, advertisements and all. It's only about boosting the ego, you know, you're the one, you know, you can do it, you know, you're the, the most. But Vedic culture is no, you are insignificant, you are controlled, you have no independence, you are fully dependent on the mercy of the seniors, the, the devotees, right? So this, that's, that's why the whole um, system is there, that um, the Supreme Lord, uh, his authority is accepted, his representatives, the Acharya, are accepted. Um, the devotees of the Acharya, the senior devotees, they're accepted as authority. Then if one is a wife, the husband is accepted as authority. Then the children, they accept the mother's authority. So everyone works under an authority. Vedic culture means no one is independent. Everybody has got an authority. Everyone, except the Supreme Lord. But even the Supreme Lord, he accepts as authority his devotees. So he's showing by example, right? So therefore, how to undergo the brahmacharya training? We have to go in the temple. You cannot be a brahmacharya at, at home. This is speculation. There's no such thing. You know? This uh, Varnasham Dharma means, uh, actually, the, the, the child, even though five-year-old, he must leave home. Hmm? And he must go and live in the ashram of the guru. So that means what? Not that... I go in the morning, I go study a few classes and I go back home, like is the modern day education. Not like this. You go there and you stay there until you're fully trained up. You know? So past the age of 15 and say 16 and so on, then you can come back. You know? that, that we have seen in the, in the life of the, the Pandavas. Of course, their Brahmachari training was also was, was Kshatriya. You know? It's not just Brahmana. So they were not learning... Uh, so much about the Ved they were studying Vedas because Kshatriya also studied, but not as much as Brahmanas, and they were mainly focusing on the art, you know, Dhanur Veda, right? Uh, but us, the Brahmacharya training that Prabhupada has given us uh, is Vaishnav, so Brahmana Vaishnav. So he wants us that we are, uh, we get trained in the temple, not associating with women, uh, so that uh, because. Naturally, when the sense object is not present, the senses are more easily to control. That is uh, natural. So if the brahmachari lives in the temple and he's not allowed to freely intermingle with women, then he will be able to control uh, better his senses. Um, so concerning brahmacharya, we can read this here. Yeah. Can you, can you see this? So this is uh, Bhagavatam 6, 1, 13 and 14. Kirtida Mataji, can you read? Kirtida Mataji, yeah. Hare Krishna. To concentrate the mind, one must observe a life of celibacy and not fall down. 
one must undergo the austerity of voluntarily giving up the sense enjoyment. One must then control the mind and senses, give charity, be truthful, clean and non-violent, follow the regulative principles and regularly chant the holy name of the Lord. Thus a sober and a faithful person who knows the religious principle is temporarily purified of all sins performed with his body, words and mind. These sins are like the dried leaves of the creepers beneath the bamboo tree, which may be burdened by the fire, although their roots remain to grow again at the first opportunity. Mm. Okay. Um, let me see here. Yeah, how long? Okay. Prabhupada speaks of Brahmachara. We can read. Tapa is explained in the Spriti Sastra as follows. Man, manasas chind, chindriyanam cha ekagrayam paramam tapaha complete control of the mind and the senses and their complete concentration on the kind of the activity is called tapa. Our Krishna consciousness movement is teaching people how to concentrate the mind on a devotional service. This is a first class tapa, brahmacharya. The life of celibacy has the eight aspects. One should not think of the woman, speak about sex life, Dully with a woman, look lustful at a woman, talk up intimately with a woman, or decide to engage in a sexual intercourse. Nor should one endowed for sex life or engage in a sex life. One should yeah. not so, even. Yeah, so uh, you see, Brahmacharya does not only mean to restrain from the action of sex. No, Brahmacharya has got eight aspects. Um, so one should not think of a woman. Mm. Now, of course, uh, you know, in, in modern day's world, women uh, are allowed to intermingle with, with men. So it's not the same thing as it used to be in Vedic culture. And plus, for the sake of managing temple, preaching, it's not, it's almost impossible. But when that thought comes, if somehow the brahmachari thinks of a woman, immediately he should be engaged in some service. So that's why it's so important to be in the temple. You cannot guard yourself on your own at home it is not possible you you will fall down therefore we must be in the association of, the, of the devotees protected by the temple you know speak about sex life of course there should no be no <clears throat> uh such topic dally with women so dally mm, here uh, act or move slowly uh doll means you know be loiter chit chat feel comfortable uh, that should not be at all allowed for brahmachari. Of course, he will speak with women. That is not, uh, I mean, to say uh, a sin because it, it's after all for advancing in Krishna consciousness. So a brahmachari now, just like our Shivantadva Vidya's brahmachari, every day he sees so many women, you know, they, there's no other way. But why does he speak with them? No, to, to further the preaching cause, that's all. And this way he will be protected. Look lustfully at women, okay? So <clears throat> now uh, they are everywhere. They wear, you know, uh, very uh, extravagant clothes, colorful clothes. So how to not look? Then we should not look twice, you know, because the eyes sometimes will be attracted, right? You will look, but immediately one should bring back the mind under control and don't look again. You know, you know, she's there walking. Don't look again. Uh, that in this way, he will be able to, uh, control. Talk intimately with women. Okay. Decide to engage in sexual intercourse. No should one endeavor for sex life or engage in sex life. Okay, Mataji, you can continue. One should not even think of a woman or look at them. To say nothing of uh, uh, talking, to say nothing of talking with them. This is called first class brahmacharya. If the brahmachari or sannyasi talks with the woman in a scheduled place, naturally there will be the possibility of a sex life without anyone's knowledge. 
therefore a complete brahmachari practice is just the opposite if one is a perfect brahmachari he can very easily controls the mind and senses give charity speak truthfully and so forth to begin however to begin however one must control the tongue and the process of eating in bhakti mar marga the path of devotional service one must strictly follow the regulative principle by first controlling the tongue sevon mukhe hi jihva dau savyam eva spuhuryati adah the tongue jihva can be controlled if one chants the hare krishna maha mantra does not speak of any subjects other than those con concerning krishna and does not taste anything not offered yes. to krishna yes so uh, you know jihva uh, vegam udara upasta vegam so we have three urges that are in line right so you know you know all this so we have the tongue the belly and the genitals so if the tongue is not controlled we will always want to be eating palatable food so in other words we will be eating for the pleasure of eating only and not for actually requiring energy so if there's overeating then the belly will expand that's what happens when we put more food in the belly the belly expands and expands and because the belly expands naturally will require more food in the future to for you know to be supplied so and when the belly is filled with a lot of food the genitals are naturally agitated so therefore it is said that a brahmachari should not eat food that are too high on protein uh, so why is urad dal discouraged to be eaten very often because it is very high in protein why is paneer not so good to eat too much because also it is very high on fat and paneer and uh, fat and protein you know uh, here in china <laughs> they cook tofu you know and the this is another thing uh, you know like his grace in nagopa prabhu he doesn't take tofu uh, he doesn't take any soy so he also instructs the brahmachari that they should not eat any soy so at the, in singapore temple there's no soy that is being cooked you know uh most of the, sometimes they distribute some tofu uh, for you know uh, old people's folks uh, old people's house and so on but us they both actually not even brahmachari you know even us grihastha should not take such a very heavy in protein food because uh, grihastha can also be a brahmachari if he's uh, strictly following the principles of uh you know sex life in grihastha ashram he's definitely a brahmachari also so in fact he, he might be even greater than a brahmachari because every day he's associating with a woman but he's capable of restraining himself you know prop i'm not speculating here prop had mentioned that in in one letter already um so we should not unnecessarily agitate the senses now here i know <laughs> that you know chinese people they love tofu right and not just tofu anything made out of soy so that's another thing i'm dealing with here is that they really the matajis really like to cook with this uh simili meat you know like chunks soy chunks right so they use this to cook and sometimes tofu also and soy sauce so all these things actually although we should not eat they have been accustomed so much because of their culture you know and uh that's another thing i have to tolerate so I, again i i i asked him his grace nago babu how could i deal with this so nago babu we said you don't touch you know if they see you don't touch naturally somehow or other they will diminish or they will cook less often because they will know that you know he might he might probably is not eating that so uh so anyway but i can tell you for certain that i know i know the you know since tofu is widely available here it's a fact when one eats food that is very heavy in protein he will naturally feel agitated sexually you know and again another thing is sleeping over sleeping prabhupad said we should never cross the 6 hours limit as a stretch meaning that if your your night time when you sleep you should not cross 6 6 hours because as soon as you cross that 6 hours then you fall in the mode of you know passion and ignorance comes in the dream and the 
the genitals become more agitated, right? So uh, definitely we should reduce. And probiotics that actually this, this amongst the eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, the worst is sleeping probiotics. Because if we oversleep, we will fall prey to the others. We will start to overeat. We'll start to you know, have over sex life and you know, defend. So therefore, this sleeping is very important. And that's why living in a temple is so important. Because you'll have service, you know, until, you know, sometimes 11 at night. I don't know if any of you have been to Singapore Temple here. Uh, who is in, yeah, Radhika Saki Mataji, she knows. Uh, she's, in, um, she's in Singapore. So service goes on up to 11, sometimes 11.30, sometimes, sometimes 12, you know. So there's no opportunity. I, I used to call Singapore the sleepless land. <laughs> because every time I'd go there, I'd hardly sleep, you know. But because you're in the fire service surrounded by the devotees, you can handle it. You cannot handle that much less of sleep at home, you know. Even I'm here now, Prabhupada in the, you know, the verse in Bhagavad Gita that uh, Lord Sri Krishna speaks of, one should not eat too much, sleep too, uh, sleep too much, right? Not sleep too less, eat too less. So in that purport, Prabhupada speaks that if in our 24 hours, we cross over six hours of sleep, then we must be understood to be influenced by the mode of ignorance. <clears throat> so in 24 hours, only six hours of sleep. So let's say you sleep five hours at night and a one hour nap during the day in, in this way. So uh, I'll just tell you humbly uh, what, what I, I, I try to do. So when I, I, I took this purport and I said, okay, here at least I have a uh, thermometer or whatever so i have some measurement that this six hours is the standard and more than that means i'm influenced by the mode of ignorance so now what i do uh, also because i try to save time because taking a nap during the day means you have to go and lie down sometimes you don't fall asleep straight away then when you wake up you have to go take one one extra shower you know and plus that would be adding up on the shower that i take before offering the fruits so I wanted to boil that down. So what I do now is I go to bed early at night. I go to bed at 9.30. It's very early. Because there's no uh, service here in the evening time. It's not like Singapore. Okay. So I go to bed at 9.30 and I wake up at 3.25. So that's my six hours there. And I don't take rest during the day. So I save time. I don't have to deal with going to bed, sleeping again during the day, waking up, taking shower. That, that's out of the way. And I know that I've got my six hours in. So if I feel tired, if I'm not capable of doing my duty throughout the day, that means I should try to fix something else in my, in my daily life. Not that I have to sleep more. There's something that is affecting me that is bringing me in the mode of ignorance. Because Prabhupada said, if you need more than six, you're affected. So what is that thing that is affecting me? So you get my point is that I fix that six hours there. Then I try to see what is affecting me in my daily life that I feel still tired. So it's that it generally it comes down to what we're eating. You know, if we're eating too much or if we're eating things in the mode of ignorance, mushroom, that's another thing. Prabhupada in some letters, he said that uh, mushrooms are, are not uh, bad in themselves, but better if we don't offer you know, and then in another letter, he said, mushroom are dirty, you know, we should not do. But Prabhupada knew, you know, he knows that this Krishna consciousness movement is going to be spread throughout the whole world. He knows that some culture really like mushrooms, like here in China. And he knows that they won't be able to give that up straight away. So by the purification method, they will be able to give up one day. You know? So this is another thing I'm dealing with, <laughs> mushroom. So I'm not taking myself, but, you know, Mataji. So, uh, by giving these things up, then we will diminish the 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 the, the um, uh, vagum and uh, the push, the urge in the tongue. Will diminish the urge in the belly and will diminish the urge in the genital. And therefore, that will be much more easier for us to not indulge uh, or not have the desire to be you know, to indulge in, in sex life. Okay, um, we can continue with that report. Can you, are you seeing? Yes. Does not taste anything, not a fruit to Krishna. Yeah, okay. If one can. If one can control the tongue in this way, Brahmacharya, uh, and other purifying process will automatically follow. 
It will be explained in the next verse that the path of devotional service is completely perfect and is therefore superior to the path of the fruitive activities and path of the knowledge. Quoting from the Vedas, Srila Vira, Virara, Vira Raghava Acharya explained that austerity involves observing fast as fully as possible. Tapa Sana Kena Srila Rupa Goswami has advised that Atyahara, too much eating, is uh, the impediment to the advancement in the spiritual life. Also in a Bhagavad Gita 6.17, Krishna says, Yuktahara vi, viharasya yukta chetasya ka, karmasu yukta swapna va, 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 va bodasya yogo bhavati dukhaha he who is Im, Im, imperated in his habits of eating, sleeping, working and recreation can imitate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. In text 14, the word dhiraha means those who are undisturbed under all circumstances is very significant. Krishna tells Arjuna in a Bhagavad Gita 2.14, Matra Sparsha Sukonteya Sitoshna Sukadukada Agna Agana Paino Nitya Stantitikshava Bharata, O son of the Krishna, to the in uh, the, the non-permanent appearance of the happiness and distress and their disappearance in a due course are like the appearance and disappearance of the winter and summer season. They arise from the sense perception, O Saint Skion of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. In material life, there are many disturbances. Atya, Atyatmika, Adi Daivika, and Adi Bhautika. One who has learned to tolerate this disturbance under all circumstances is called Dira. Hmm. So, dhira, to become dhira, uh, the whole process of spiritual life is to make the mind strong. Karmis are um, pulled by their senses, right? In Bhagavad Gita, uh, each, each senses that the mind focus on uh, is swept away, just like a boat is swept away by the wind, right? So the karmis are, are basically in the senses most of the time. Their senses are saying, you go do that, you go do this, you go. But uh, a, a, a devotee has to be restraining the senses. He has to be uh, controlling the mind, and that is done by higher intelligence. So with this intellect, uh, and <clears throat> not with just jnana, because we can study verses, you know, we can remember 100,000 verses or you know, 100 verses or 1,000 verses, but if we don't realize those verses, still our mind will be swept away. So real spiritual advancement has to be began to realize this knowledge, okay? So the more we practice, the more we follow Shaprabhupada's instructions and please him, the jnana will be transformed into vijnana. Jnana means knowledge. Vijnana means intelligence or realized knowledge or practical application. of it. So <clears throat> the more we perform this devotional service, this sadhana, right? Waking up early, chanting our rounds. It should be like a clock. There should be no question of, uh, oh, today I won't do it. No, day in, day out. You know, and in this way, we'll slowly bring the mind more and more under control, more and more under control. But still, we should never give it a chance because the mind, as soon as he sees that here's an opportunity, boom, he will capture again. So therefore, we should follow in the footstep of his grace in Prabhu that he never missed one Mangalarti, never. Actually, I think he did this once and he fasted the whole day. He did the Nirjal fast because he missed one Mangalati. So such determination, we should try also, you know, to follow in his footstep. And, and in this way, yes, slowly the mind will become under control. And if the mind is under control, the senses are under control. Because the mind is the, what do you call that? The reins. And the senses are the horses. And the driver is the intelligence. So if you control the mind, immediately the, the senses will be controlled. So, and that is done through means of intelligence. So, but you cannot do that if you are on your own. You must be in the association of devotees. 
So now, because it's very hard, we have devotees from all over the world, you know, it's, uh, so therefore, as much as possible this way to hear, attend live classes, you know, and engage in some service. We have opened, uh, you know, by the initiative, uh, His Grace Tadavit Das Brahmachari, Shimati uh, Radhika Sekita Devidasi. So <clears throat> they have created this service now of pro creating Prabhupada reels or, um, you know, some new videos. So we are offering opportunity to devotees all over the world to have some engagements, even though they don't have a center where they are or other devotees. They can keep engaged by doing the service and, you know, at the same time listening to classes. So we should uh, use this opportunity. Uh, but best thing, definitely higher than that, is to find a temple where we can live full time and live as a brahmachari. That's the way. And in this way, <clears throat> we will get help to control the, the habit of uh, the bad habit of being lust, lustful, you know. So here this is Shira Narada Muni's instruction concerning this topic. Uh, I think we can uh, maybe close that question with this verse. Who wants to read? By making plans with determination, one should give up lusty desires for sense gratification. Similarly, by giving up envy, one should conquer anger. By discussing the disadvantages of accumulating wealth, one should give up greed. And by discussing the truth, one should give up fear. Purport, Srila Vishwanatha Chakravarti Thakura has suggested how one can conquer lusty desires for sense gratification. One cannot give up thinking of women, for thinking in this way is natural. Even while walking on the street, one will see so many women. However, if one is determined not to live with a woman, even while seeing a woman, he will not become lusty. Okay, so this is an important aspect. And that's why Brahmacharya was there. That you stay away from women for so many years. So naturally, you will not uh, become agitated. And why in Vedic culture, we always address uh, women as Mataji. Um, to try to see them as our mothers. So... Uh, if you see every woman as mother, then where is the question of uh, being agitated? So Vedic culture, you know, uh, is very high standard, <clears throat> but the science is there, the science is seen. Okay. If, if one is determined not to have sex, he can automatically conquer lusty desires. The example given in this regard is that even if one is hungry, if on a particular day one is... He, he is determined to observe fasting, he can naturally conquer the disturbances of hunger and thirst. If one is determined not to be envious of anyone, he can naturally conquer anger. Similarly, one can give up the desire to accumulate wealth simply by considering how difficult it is to protect the money in one's possession. If one keeps a large amount of cash with him, he is always anxious about keeping it properly. Thus. If one discusses the disadvantages of accumulating wealth, he can naturally give up business without difficulty. Hmm. <clears throat> so, all these regulations of brahmacharya are very much important for us to conquer over lust. And uh, as I was saying earlier, I was studying the you know the Manu Samhita to find some verses. Um, of course, uh, we should not study Manu Samhita just for the, the sake of studying. You know, I, I have a, a service that I'm doing with this. But so in, in that, it is said, how much one indulges in sex life, that much he will become more lusty. So that means I'm engaging a lot in sex life, so that much of what I've done will be added to my already lusty mind. <clears throat> in other words, it is simply increasing. My brother, who's an atheist, my older brother, we don't have the same father. We should have the same mother. This is another common thing in the West. Um, so he's an atheist. He's 12 years older than me. And I remember when I was a child, I mean, not a child, but you know, a teenager, we can say, I was asking him because I was starting to feel this lust, right? And I was feeling this stuff. And I asked him the question. I said, is this going to be um, going away? Is it going to be reducing with age? And he told me, no, it's simply going to be increasing. 
he told me like that and i became fearful at that time i was not uh, chanting or anything you know i was i mean a teenager what, what did i know so i i said i i thought wow well, no increasing i'm already feeling this stuff i didn't have this before right because 10 year old boy they just play they don't care but then when this lust comes you start to look at women and this so i was very disturbed to know that that it was going to be increasing so that's what they think because they're lusty and they are indulging in these activities their lust simply increases and therefore they think this is it they don't know that there is a culture that teaches uh, men to go completely opposite way means to control their lusty feelings and if that is adopted it will diminish you know of course such topic are uh, sometimes uh, touchy to discuss but if i can say in my own uh, personal experience from the day that i started chanting Hare krishna to to now it, there's no comparison you know i you cannot find someone in the world that can advance i'm not saying me i'm saying uh, a person that practices devotional service as opposed to others you cannot find someone in the world that is not a devotee that can show such control uh, over sexual passion right so uh, by doing it you know continuing chanting chanting and this but the, the surrendering process has to be there you know and and to go and live in a temple that is very you know Prabhupada said it it's just like the wall street if you want to make money and you go to wall street you have immediate uh buyer and immediate i mean to say immediate seller immediate buyer that means you know you all oh, some stock is very cheap i buy it and then it goes up a bit someone buy it. okay so in in matter of seconds you're making money the same thing in the temple in the temple because we've got so many opportunities for service devotees are all around uh, so there is immediate uh opportunity for spiritual advancement and because you're so busy you're not disturbed with all these things if you're not engaged in service day in day out then what happens when you're not engaged in service what are you doing right okay you take the phone and this thing i mean this is the worst if we don't use this for krishna it's the worst i was shocked you know that i downloaded instagram not so long ago because you know i tried to open an account and, and you press on that uh, finding you know there's the small uh, uh, magnifier what do you see prostitutes everywhere girls are becoming prostitutes because of this social media this is destroying human race i simply press and i thought i this was some sort of pornography site or something that it, it led me but it's no it's just normal girls who have got the instagram account and what do they do they're simply showing showing more and more and more and more because you know women are not controlled nowadays they're not protected so they're let loose and what do they do because lust is seven to eight times more strong in the body of a woman and they they do not undergo proper training therefore it manifests and they are simply trying to uh, please men with their body so they're you know taking the, the profession of prostitutes by by showing themselves so i was shocked and i was thinking what is the world becoming so these things are very dangerous computers cell phones are very very dangerous if they're not engaged in the service so therefore if we have a lack in service then what are we going to fill that time with it has to be sense gratification somehow or other and what the sense gratification leads towards it all leads towards the same thing sex life so um that's it you know if you want to practice brahmacharya better be in a temple in the association of devotees you are protected and uh, they will guide you you know and by taking associate uh, initiation also uh, Shri Prabhupada is going to take a huge load off your, your shoulder you know all the sins that you have accumulated he's going to take that out that's going to help a lot you know? and that's inevitable you must you must surrender to the Prabhupada at one point you must take formal initiation you know okay so I think uh, maybe we have uh, tried to answer a little bit Dimitri Prabhu is saying, and now Instagram is banned in Russia, so I thought it's nice not to see all that nonsense that's going on there. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Actually, to tell you the truth, you know, I use a lot of these cameras and phones for my services that I'm doing, these videos and all that, but actually I really don't like all this stuff. I don't like cameras, I don't like cell phones, I don't like computers. I wish <laughs> I preached in an era that we didn't have all these things. Of course, for Krishna, we must accept them. And it's a fact that we can do wonderful things. For service, I love these things. 
uh, to be able to create nice um, uh, you know, videos and all, and just this would never be possible beforehand. So it's wonderful that we have these, but if to see how the world is right now with these things, I feel very much dis disgusted. You know? So, okay, uh, I hope that uh, we have learned something together. I certainly have learned you know, by reading again and again Prabhupada's purport. So um, if there's no other question, maybe we can end it here. Yes, Pro. Thank you so much, Pro. Yes, we definitely learned a lot from you. And it was really like how this two hours went. We can't even <laughs> remember. It just went two and a half hours just like that. Thank you so much for your association and guidance, Prabhu. It was really helpful. Please accept our humble obeisances. All glories yes, to you. Yes. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you very much for uh, thinking of uh, our humble self to come. I would never think uh, that I could come and, and speak here. But, you know, by Prabhupada's mercy, this is um, helping all of us. You know, I, If I didn't have this opportunity to, to, to speak, um, what would I be doing? So it's definitely your mercy upon me. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Your detailed explanation for the questions was amazing and we really benefited a lot from all the quotes that you showed us. It's all it's all Prabhupada's mercy. Thank you, Prabhuji. It was wonderful um, lecture. We learned a lot and it's great association. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much. I'm happy to hear uh, your voice and also uh, all, all the Matajis that I've never heard before so I'm, I'm very happy and i hope that one day we can come to america and i'm yes. sure that we will come. yes yes so yes, now, waiting. yeah please uh, tolerate just just remember how shimati Draupadi has tolerated so tolerate your situation in your family life tolerate that you do not have many devotees near you at the moment and keep going krishna is making arrangements we have to keep that faith you know things are going to be happening and as I'm saying, also, we all have our different challenges, but uh, we need patience. You know, patience is the key. Okay. So ISKM will, will definitely see a boom. Uh, we just need to wait for it. Okay. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your all the guidance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Hare thank Krishna. you so much, Prabhuji. Please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna